For the past four or five years, EMTB motors have kind of lived within this cozy little bubble, pushing out between 80 and 90 Newton meters. And then all of a sudden, Avinox shows up and absolutely smashes the industry's front door down with a 1000 watt motor, 120 Newton meters of torque, and all backed by one of the biggest tech engineering companies on the planet. And suddenly everyone's talking about power again. Their motorcycles is ruining trails. Is this too dangerous? So in this video, I wanna break it down properly. What do big power motors actually do? Where are the limits realistically? Is it an excellent piece of innovation or is it the beginning of the end for high power electric mountain bikes? Because honestly, things just got really interesting. So where have we actually been? A short recap, I've been covering e-bikes on this channel since 2018. So a good seven years to see the industry and how it's evolved and adapted. And over those years, we've had really four main players. That's been Bros, Shimano, Yamaha, and Bosch. And they've had the lion's share of the market, having 80, then small updates to 85, then 90 Newton meters. And the funny part is no one ever really talked about watts at all in the past. I remember being on the Shimano EP8 launch and nothing about watts at all. The Bosch Gen 4, nothing about watts at all. It was all Newton meters. And really this exists because of this daft, continuous 250 watt law that exists in the EU. A quick refresher, because this is where the whole watts debate gets a bit stupid. That 250 watt number you see on e-bikes, it's not real, it's not peak power, and it's not what the motor actually does. It's the legacy rule from the early 90s when e-bikes were basically toys. Back then, governments needed a simple way to say, this is a bicycle, not a moped. So they picked a number that felt bicycle-like. This should be 250 watt power. 250 watts continuous, meaning power the motor could hold forever without melting. Fast forward 30 years and the tech has completely changed. We've got lithium batteries, efficient controllers, decent mid-drive motors, proper torque, but the rules never kept up. The tech evolved massively, but the legislation is still stuck in the 90s. Yet there's still talk in Europe of introducing a fixed 750 watt cap. And there are whole categories like cargo bikes that genuinely need more than 750 watts to really expand their usefulness. And the reality is all of those motors previously put out more than 250 watts peak anyway, but they could get away with it because of this continuous rated 250 watts, essentially the motor's D rate to tick that box. And torque became the safe number when the motor manufacturers bought out their new motors, they went from 75 to 80, 80 to 85, and then up to 90. And no one questioned it because torque, there's no regulations or rules on that whatsoever. So torque was all that everyone spoke about in any of the marketing material. Then Avanox comes in and says, here's the real number, here's what we're putting out, a thousand watts peak, 120 Newton meters, and suddenly watts matter again. So Avanox launched their new motor at Eurobike 2024 and it has triple digit torque, a thousand watts, tons of smart features, a touch screen, wireless controls, a two and a half kilo motor, lighter than pretty much anyone else for a full power motor, full app ecosystem, fast charging, and to be honest, features that the e-bike industry has never had before. And then everyone else kind of went, right, what are we gonna do? And you're already seeing the reaction. Bosch went from 600 watts peak to 750. Yamaha now has an 800 watt system. And I'd be very surprised if Shimano, Bros, Specialized and the others don't push their motors right up to the limit as well to close the gap to Avinox. The jump from six or 700 watts to a thousand sounds huge. And yeah, you can absolutely feel it when the trail gets steep. But here's the nuance. Every EMTB still tops out at 25 kilometers an hour. So what does that extra power actually do? A Bosch or Shimano motor can already hit 25 kilometers an hour on a mild climb. They're not weak, but as soon as the gradient gets steeper, they do start to run out of headroom. You drop under the limiter, the cadence slows and the bike fades. A higher watt motor just delays that moment. So instead of holding 25 kilometers an hour on a 5% gradient climb, you might hold it on a 10% climb. With the Avinox motor, there's just a bigger window where you can actually reach it. And this taps into something deeper. 
because humans don't necessarily chase top speed, we chase progress. We want things to feel easier, smoother, more capable. We want the next step forward. And here's the funny thing. A decent road rider on a decent road bike goes way faster than all of these motors. They go way faster than 25 kilometers an hour. Even on an incline, a road rider can hold a steady pace above 25 kilometers an hour. So speed on a bike without a motor comes from fitness and gravity. More motor power just stops the bike bogging down. And with a more powerful motor, you can climb steeper stuff for longer. And I see lots of comments online from people saying, we don't need more power. Maybe what they mean is, I don't need more power. And I know people that are definitely in that 100 kilo plus category that do need more power. Perhaps to keep up with a 60 kilo rider, a family member, son, daughter, or just someone that's riding a lot more than them. You feel the extra power on climbs immediately and the acceleration too. The bike holds speeds better, everything feels stronger. But past that, every additional watt comes with a cost. There's more heat, more battery consumption, more strain on the drivetrain and components, and the gains get smaller and the trade-offs get bigger. Even with today's big 800 watt hour batteries, if you're asking the motor to dump huge power constantly, the range disappears pretty quickly. Motors might hit 1100 watts, 1200 watts, and maybe more, but it's a little bit like chasing horsepower in cars. The numbers look great on paper, but they don't necessarily change the experience in a meaningful way. You get a bit more punch, but there's more compromises too. So one of the biggest things we need is actually intelligent power. Power that is actually usable. So take the speed ring, for example, on the Avinox motor. It senses 42 times the revolution, the speed that the bike is actually doing, as opposed to pretty much all the others out there on the market that sense the speed on a single rotation. So it's got a much higher resolution sensor. So it can understand more details about how the bike is performing and the speed it's achieving by analyzing the wheel speed 42 times the rotation. And that's why the power delivery feels very smooth and not aggressive when you start pedaling on the Avanox system. And there's other things that it has on the motor, like it can reduce the torque when you shift to protect the drivetrain. Because let's be honest, more power is putting more strain through the drivetrain, especially when you shift under power. But it can momentarily blip the power down as soon as you shift and reduce the torque that's put through the chain to reduce wear and tear on the drivetrain. So you're not grinding down the chain and cassette as much as you would without that kind of feature. And there's other things on the bike like coast shifting. So the motor knows when you're changing gear because it senses the power draw from the main battery, the derailleur is connected to the motor, and it can automatically rotate the chain ring and shift without you pedaling. Plus the Avanox also bought things that lots of riders have been asking for for a while, like fast charging. It's got a 12 amp charger, GPS built in, a SIM card for theft protection, touch screen. You don't need an app to adjust the motor parameters. You can just do it whilst you're out on the trail. So with Avanox, everyone is talking about the thousand watt headline figure, but actually there's more to the entire package than just that headline stat. But the real innovation is how the system manages that wattage. Now the power figure, isn't as impressive to me as the overall experience of riding the bike. Take a Tesla. It's a thousand horsepower, a Tesla Plaid. It can do naught to 60 in 1.99 seconds. The power is incredible, but it's how it delivers the power that's perhaps even more incredible because that same car, you can go to Tesco and do your weekly shopping in. Now that Tesla Plaid with its thousand horsepower can be driven extremely delicately. You can drive it at two miles an hour. You can drive it on a drag strip or you can drive it on a daily. It is effortless to drive. And that is the remarkable thing, how that power is harnessed and how it's delivered to the driver. And I can see some parallels with how the Avanox system works as well. It's not aggressive. It's fast if you want it to be. You can dial it down if you don't want it to be. And that's what good feels like. It's strong but predictable. There's a smooth ramp up in the power and there's no sketchy surges that are going to surprise you. So what comes next? 1,300 watts, 1,500, 2 kilowatts? I don't think it's power, it's brains. It's how all of this stuff comes together and makes us, the rider, have the best possible experience. Adaptive assist, traction control, heat management, mapping, navigation, power curves that adapt instantly to what you're doing, software that learns your riding style, apps that are easy to use. So yeah, this is a turning point for the industry, but all of this is a good thing. The industry was in a bubble 
and there was not really a lot of innovation. Yeah, things are getting lighter, maybe more reliable, but we didn't really have all the things that the Avanox brought us in a single package. And this is where, for me personally, the Avanox system makes the other brands become better. They have to come out with more intelligent and smarter solutions. It's the entire experience, how the watts are delivered, and the entire package that make the bike what they are. I don't think the future is just more power, it's better power, more controlled and more predictable. Now I wanna know, tell me about your thoughts. What is your perfect number? Is it 750, is it 1000? Do you just want all the power? So drop it in the comments. I'd love to see your feedback. This is a really hot debate and I think it's great to see everyone's thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.